Hello, everybody. Today, we want to work on example two of linear regression. So let's get right to it. If you watched my first video, or the first two videos, I took my time to really break down each step. This time, in this one example, I'm going to go a little faster. So as needed, pause the video, replay it, and, you know, ask me questions as needed. So first thing we got to do is understand our data set. This time, we're looking at cost. So we're going to call it cost one. Again, if you understand the previous video, the reason why I call it cost one is I'm worried there's a cost function, but I don't think there's too many times there's going to be a cost one function. It's just a way for me to make sure I do not by any chance overwrite some information that's important. So that's why I call it cost one. So you need your data set. I'm going to grab my data set. It's on restaurants. So I've grabbed that data set. Boom, it gets loaded in. I like to do my typical commands of attaching the headers. And oops, it's being masked, and that's fine. Um, that means I must have been working on this file prior. I like to always show this, because if it says masked, that means you either were working on it before, or you're working on a file very similar. And so these variable names, these category names, are once again going to be reused in this new file. So be careful if you're calling an old file to a new file kind of situation. If you didn't see that, no big deal. It's not a big error. Just got to be careful of that. All right. Now, I like to make sure I did load it correctly. So the head gives me the first six items in my list. I know I have over here 100 observations of 10 variables. I know what I have. So what we have here is we have location of the restaurant, city, and I think there's some, well, you know, cost one. You can actually see everything, all 100. So we can see city and suburban. So it's broken down in this restaurants are either suburban or city. And what we had was a food, food critic go out and they rated their food, rated their decor, rated their service. And in the end, we gave them a total rating. If you add these three numbers up, you get the total rating. Um, if you're wondering what the coded location is, it's zero for city and one for suburban. Um, this will be helpful when we look at dummy variables in multiple regression. This is an awesome data set to look at when we're looking at multiple regression. Right now, we are not, so that's fine. Um, the cost would be the total cost that person spent there that was reviewing the location. That would be the cost they spent on food. So that's what I want to study. What I would like to study right now is the effect of the total sum, sum writing. So let me bring back the head of cost one, just so I can see, again, the first few problem headers. I would like to relate the summed rating, the summated rating, the total rating of the restaurant experience versus the cost. So let's do this right now. The first thing I would do is I would plot the X versus the Y. So again, you gotta know what you wanna predict. We wanna predict cost, so that's my Y. I'm going to put the summated, the sum rated, in the X and the cost in the Y. And over to my right pops up a beautiful plot. And just like I said in previous videos, what I would do is after the code has been written right, I would highlight it, right click, click copy it, open up a Word file and paste it, all right? If you look at my previous examples, I like to do this is once I get the code right, I like to copy it and paste it so that way, I never really have to type in the code again. Now, plot is an easy command, so I don't care about that. But if it's a longer command that's nuanced, I would utilize that. You could also copy any picture by clicking export. Copy, I mean, you can save it, by the way. Notice, save as image, save as PDF. Or copy the clipboard, copy the plot, and then paste it right into a Word file. I like to utilize that. All right, so what do we want to look at here? Well, this is the plot. Honestly, this is a beautiful plot. I have a potential trend line to go through right straight through this set. So I'm looking at a pretty good plot. I am curious right away um, what the correlation would be in this example. So right away, I could go, what is the correlation, the R value of sum added rating, sum added rating, and cost? I don't expect it to be too high. The answer is 0.7387. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, there's not that much scatter if I pretend 
about a prediction line going straight through the middle of those dots. There's not much scatter, but it's not as high end as the previous example we worked on. But 7.73 is pretty good. It's a pretty high correlation. Again, usually above 0.6 is a pretty strong linear relationship. So we're going to go with this is a pretty strong relationship. Now, obviously, this is all about the prediction line. So we got to make a prediction line. I'm going to call it the cost line one. Again, just a reminder, again, the reason I put one is to make sure if there's anything else called cost line, I don't get screwed up and saved it in there. So cost line one, and that is going to be a linear model, LM. Read up on the instructions of LM, linear models in R. Anything I type in, I would Google, you know, LM in our studio or plot in our studio or COR in our studio, right? That way you get to know each command. There's not many commands you need to know for linear regression, so might as well know them well. So linear modeling, what's going to happen? Well, you have to know your Y variable. That's cost. Tilde, you have to know the independent X variable. That would be the summatic, uh, not far enough, the summatted rating. Got it. And if I keep saying it differently, I apologize. Summatted rating, sum rating, all right? Same thing to me. So there's my cost function. There are extra things you can add in. This is all I'm adding into my LM function. Please read up on how much you can add into each one of these. And when you copy and paste each line over, you should write about them. So you really know how to use the linear model command. So there we go. We have now stored this model, this prediction line, into the commit, not command, but the variable cost line one. And if you want a quick idea of what it looks like, you can run the summary of cost line one. When you do, you get a lot of impressive information. I pause because I want you to look this over. When I do multiple regression later on, I'm gonna be utilizing a lot of the information you see here. For example, the F statistic will become valuable later on, not to me right now. I'm gonna make some comments. That's where the pound sign comes in. Again, I'm gonna go pretty fast and loose through this because of my previous video. If you need to pause at this moment, pause it so you can take a look at it or after I say something please pause it replay it make sure it makes sense so the pound sign if the professor or you're looking for the prediction line you got to know where it is well the prediction line is right above you there is the y hat equals you need the slope which is 1.496 the three decimals if you notice that's right above in the summated rating estimate x What's our y-intercept? It's negative, so negative 46.77, I guess, to 2. So there is my prediction line. So if I needed to make a prediction, y hat, I'd plug into there. If I need to make a prediction, if the rating was 60, I'd plug 60 into there, and I should find my projected cost. That's really what this prediction line's doing. You tell me your x. You tell me your total rating. I'll plug it in for x, the total rating, and I'll predict how much the cost would be. That's what this is all about, guys, making predictions, making forecasts. This is really the first level of forecasting right here. How good is this model? That's really the rest of the investigation is how good is this model? Well, before I ask how good is the model, you know, we should talk about slope. Well, the slope is 1.496. And the question is, what does it mean? Yes, we know it's change in y over change in x. But what it means is if we increase x, and I like to call it X before I call it X. X is what again? X would you be your rating. If we increase rating by one point, then the cost, the average cost, the average cost goes up because the slope is positive, goes up by, in this case, a dollar forty or uh, a buck forty-nine, a buck fifty, if you want to call it that, one point four nine six. And so that's what, it's, that's what the slope says here. Obviously, I called it the slope, as I noticed I made a typo. Good thing it's in my comment section. The slope, 1.496, is if we increase x by one unit, then, we, then the average cost, that is the y, goes up by $1.49. Excellent. So we have sort of a cost per rating point. What we can suspect a restaurant to do for each rating point that's increased. That's important to know in terms of incorporation. Higher rating means they can charge more. In some respects, it's $1.50 per point. That's the way to look at it. It's $1.50 per point is what we see the increase at. 
very important in the restaurant business. All right, once we have the slope, we can ask other questions about that that you see when I come up with the summary. You can ask, is, is there evidence, I like to call it the ITE, is there evidence that the slope is significant? And that is nothing more than a t-test. The good news is the t-test has a t-value of, can't spell worth beans today, value of 10.852 above. I'll lead you to look up the formulas for the t-test for slope, um, and you'll see how they create the number 10.852. Hint, hint, wink, wink, look at the estimate and standard error and, and how they relate to the t-value. Well, there's the t-value. Now, if you know anything about the t-distribution, if you get outside of negative 3 and 3, you're extremely critical. So I know this is a critical value, and more importantly, and the p-value, might as well call it zero. I know the p-value is not zero, but come on, that's ridiculously close to zero. And if you're ridiculously close to zero, you've got to understand, since our p-value is small, we will reject, reject H not. Now, all that's great. If you, if you don't know what H not is, though, this is useless. So you should have an H not. And the typical H not is the slope is zero. That's the typical H not. The slope here is zero. Well, no, no way in hell is the slope here, zero. We did a T test. The slope is clearly non-zero. And since we are rejecting H not, we know the slope is non-zero. Have an alpha of whatever you want to say, 5%, 10%, 5%, or 1%. You go single star, double star, triple star, right? Uh, it's That p-value is under any alpha that most people would give. Most people, I should say most everybody. <laughs> so by the t-test, I know I have a significant linear relationship. Awesome. All right. There is more information to be gathered from this. I mean, who knew how much you could get from the summary of information, right? Prediction line, the slope. A test of significance or test of slope. Um, yes, statistic. We'll talk about that in multiple progression. Not so important here. The R squared value. That's important. The R squared value is what here? Let me check out the R squared. It's 54.58. 54.58%. All right. Do not look at the adjusted R squared. That's utilized for multiple regression. So multiple R squared is what I want to look at. So that's 54.58%. That's awesome. Anytime R squared is above 50%, I really have what I'm looking for. And, and this means 54%, if you allow me to approximate, 54% of the reason uh, why, which in this case is the cost, varies, is due to the X, which is the rating. And that's very important to me. People will ask, well, how come costs fluctuate from one store to another? Custom, you know, is it to do with the decor, the food, the service? What is the real reason? What is the smoking gun reason why cost varies from one restaurant to another? We have it here. It's above 50%. I mean, as soon as you're above 50%, ding, 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 family feud, right? You got the number one answer. You got 54.58%. That's above 50%. So you have the number one reason why um, cost will vary. There are other reasons out there, and we'll talk about that again later when you do multiple regression. So, so far, we've talked about everything you can get from the summary information. What, we, what else can we do? Well, sometimes, one last thing is, let me, yeah, good, I can go down the line, confidence interval on this that's the name of my tangent line. Sorry, I called it a tangent line. I apologize. I've been doing calculus all day long. Prediction line. So V, this is important to me also. That is the confidence interval for the cost line one, for our prediction line. I look importantly, really zoom in on these slopes right here. One, two, two to one, seven. These are numbers, all right? The lower bound on the 95% confidence interval for true slope is 1.22, all right? That is important to me. 
that means no matter what, this slope cannot get under zero. And again, if the slope could get from positive to negative, that means the slope could potentially be zero. And if my data had a prediction line that potentially could be zero, we're looking at a very weak relationship. So I do not want to see my slope, my slope confidence interval to contain zero. Another point to make is these lower bounds and upper bounds, you can utilize these in your prediction equation. You can utilize both the lower bound and the upper bound for the true slope as substitutes in the prediction equation. Some might say we're going into a period of good times. Can we raise the price? Can we raise it from the original prediction equation? Can we, where, there it is, the original prediction equation. Can we raise the price? The answer is yes. We can substitute the 1496 with the 177, and that would be profit. So we can put 177 in here, and that would predict more on the pricing. If the rating really could influence the pricing even more, you could do that, the cost, by replacing it. If it feel there's a lower market coming, you can use the 122 as the slope instead. Your choice. And you can say with 95% confidence, the true slope is between these two numbers. So I should be allowed to use either 122 in bad times or 177 in good times. Most people will just use the prediction equation because that's the average prediction, right? You have the low, the average, and the high predictions, as I call them. All right, guys, I'm going to pause it here. Um, I don't want to make these two videos too long, so I'm going to make a part two, the residual analysis coming soon. Um, all of this stuff I said was awesome. The only thing that could cause any issues is if we violate the assumptions. If you violate any of the assumptions, everything I've said in this video is useless. So we always got to check the residual analysis before I'm super, super happy. Guys, thank you for checking in on me. We'll talk soon.